Pause. Okay, pardon me for wearing a dirty shirt. I slept in it, went down to the gym, and wanted to get a jump on this video. I'll shower and change it afterwards. Like the hat? Quite a few new viewers that, amazing to me, didn't know what I was talking about when I was talking about the hat. This is a hat that I wore for a couple years on videos. Get back there and look at the old ones. I know, the terrible sound drives you away. Sorry. So today's topic. Before I get to today's topic, why do you do so many videos where you're just sitting and talking to the camera? Why don't you do more videos out walking around? And that's a really good question. A few reasons. Coming up over the next uh, three or four weeks, you'll be seeing more of the local towns around Armenia. Uh, I just can't afford to do it right now, but uh, in a few weeks, I'll be out and around and looking at Circassia and Montenegro, uh, Finlandia. Uh, so you'll have something of that. But why don't I just walk around locally? Well, I, I did, and while some of you enjoyed it, I got a lot of feedback, like I always do when I'm out walking around, about how jumpy and jittery it is, and you get seasick, and you know some people actually get a headache from it. Personally, I can't stand watching jittery videos, but you know, if you're walking around holding your phone, that's what you do. Now, this is an actual video camera, a good Canon with a reasonably decent microphone for being a cheap one that took me a long time to gather resources and put it together, and it sits on a tripod. But when I'm out walking around, I'm not going to lug this around and you know depending on where you are you can be a big target because uh, it's not a small camera i do have a gopro but there's some limitations with that at the moment which i hope to be rectifying sometime over the next couple months and then i have my phone well i've got a samsung 6 plus it's actually the note 5. it's a 6 plus platform and it takes really good videos but even with the stabilization on, it, it's jumpy and jittery. Maybe it's my lead-footed walk, but, you know, you look at other people's videos, and that's no different. Um, one of everybody's favorite, the hobo traveler, God forbid, when he's out walking around. I mean, it's, it's worse than mine. So I have information that I want to put out, and it doesn't really require out walking around, so that's what this is for. And that's what I'm going to do on today's topic. Now, having said that, I do expect to have a solution over the next 10 days with that jumpy, jittery walk. And uh, if that happens, you'll be the first to know about it. Okay, so what is today's topic? Today's topic is based on a question that comes up every now and then, depending on what video I've done. Why do I hate gringos so much? Why do I avoid gringos? Why don't I have any gringo friends? And these are probably good questions, and I can understand why it might appear that way. But it's not really true. I certainly don't hate gringos. I'm a gringo. I'm not a self-hater. And this question has mostly been coming from older videos, particularly in Cuenca. Now, I have to tell you, and Cuenca is not alone in this, but Cuenca is unique in Ecuador in this, in that it has this enclave community that a good portion of them, as, as much as half of them, are whack jobs. They're the kind of people that just couldn't get along back where they came from in the States, usually. Uh, And they came here, or to Cuenca, to reinvent their life. And so all of a sudden they become something that they're not. And the last time I, I really experienced this in any 
a great amount was in Southern California. I had to live there for a little over a year. And I call them the plastic people. Um, no, I didn't invent that phrase, but this did go back uh, 40 years. Uh, call them plastic people because they were fake. They were artificial. They were something that they weren't. Everybody put on an act. And you get a portion of that in Cuenca. Now, is that everybody? No. But I do try to avoid people like that because it, it's just a... It, I feel like I'm wasting my time to semi-quote Frank Zappa. They're pajama people. So, so I can understand why it may come across that I hate gringos. As far as them congregating in their enclave, I have absolutely no problem with that. Now, these same type of gringos that you know, I find obnoxious, they're the first ones to jump on social media and make fun of and ridicule and condescend to people that maybe want to get together with their own kind, speak their own language in places like Sunrise Cafe, again, speaking in Cuenca. I love Sunrise Cafe. I don't go there to socialize because I'm just not a social person. Anybody that knows me, and there's not many, know that about me. But I love Sunrise Cafe. It's a nice atmosphere. I like the owner. I like the people that work there. The food is great. Prices are super. I mean, if you don't like Sunrise Cafe, I don't know what on this planet you would like. There's everything you could think of to like about the place. How these people will congregate and segregate themselves, they will condescend and make fun of people that are doing things like going to the Sunrise Cafe. They're just better than all that. They're above all of that. And I have no issue, you know, the, the thing to make fun of in Cuenca is Gringolandia, where all the gringos go. Why? I mean, it, it's their choice of where they want to live, and, it, you know, who is anybody else to put them down for it? It happens to be a nice neighborhood. I never lived there, but, I, you know, I could. I, you know, I would. I wouldn't oppose myself to it. I don't have to go live in a squalid hut to make myself authentic. There's nothing wrong with living in a nice area, in a nice building, it has an elevator. There's nothing wrong with that. It's people's choice, and you need to respect their choice. And the people that can't respect that, that condescend to that, that talk about how they're not authentic, I, I, I just don't get that. Why is it any of their business? I, I just can't stand people like that. And because there was a fair portion of those, I didn't want to run into them. I avoided places where they might be. But back on this idea of congregating, nobody gives a second thought to something like Chinatown. You know, in New York City, in San Francisco, you have these huge Chinatowns. And you go there, and you're in authentic China. I mean, you really are. And if you're Chinese, you go to Chinatown so you can feel at home. You can find things that you're familiar with, whether it be food or any kind of shopping items, of course they're going to congregate there. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's human nature to want to do that. Birds of a feather and all of that kind of thing. And there's no point or reason to ridicule them other than tear someone down to build yourself up. So to condescend to those people speaks more to the people doing that, in my opinion. Now, you might be one of those people, and that's, you know, go for it. Just stay out of my sphere, because I don't think life should be about expending energy on tearing other people down. I think life should be about enjoying life. And one way to enjoy life is to build other people up. So that negative energy that floats around, and no, I'm not a tree hugger, but Truth is truth. I mean, negative energy is, is, is evil. There's nothing good about it. Positive energy is life embracing. And so I would prefer to be around people like that. So again, in Cuenca, it was just a matter of the odds. Now here in Armenia, there's very few uh, gringos. And when you get away from some of these large enclaves where they escaped where they came from, you don't see this very much. Another sign of the type of gringos that I don't care for is they're self-hating, self-loathing. 
they mostly come from the United States, and they pretty much despise the United States. They will cut down the United States at every opportunity they can, and they will always compare. So if you say something about Cuenca or Ecuador or Colombia or anywhere else, they will build that up and instantly want to compare to the United States in a negative fashion. Oh, the United States could never do this because such and such and such. So, you know, one of the big fallacies in Cuenca is, oh, the fruits and vegetables in Cuenca are so much better than the poison food chain in the United States with all its steroids. And, but if you actually look into this, the safest food source in the world is in the United States. Well, there may be some issues, but in Ecuador, you have the problem of pesticides are unregulated. Pesticides are sold that are actually banned in other places of the world, including the United States. They are not the best fruits and vegetables in the world. That's not to say that you can't find them, but you have to look for them. You can't just go to the market and grab fruits and vegetables and say, ah, I got all this good, healthy stuff. You could be poisoning yourself. You don't know. And and if you were to bring that up, which I have in the past, about being careful what your source is, you get these people that hate because, well, I'm not hating on Ecuador and I'm not hating on Cuenca. I'm just saying, be aware of this, enjoy what you're doing, but do it in such a manner as you're not poisoning yourself. The response from that will inevitably be a massive amount of hate towards me because I've said something they don't want to hear. For the life of me, I don't understand why they want to tear down the United States. Now, as everybody watching this by now knows, I've traveled a lot throughout the world, over Asia, Europe, South America. I've traveled all over the place. And everywhere you go, it's pretty much beautiful, with the exception of a lot of Peru, but we won't talk about that. Maybe the most beautiful place on this planet is upstate New York. <gasps> How can you say that? Well, go to upstate New York and spend some time. Of course, you get the horrible weather, so you can only enjoy it half the year. But the United States is a beautiful, diverse place. And why anybody would want to hate that, I just don't get it. Why anybody wants to apologize for success and prosperity, I don't get it. We have, in the United States, clean water. We have clean air. Yeah, you got, you know, your areas of problems, but it's not rampant. You can't say that about a lot of places in this world. You don't have parasite issues very much in the United States, although in some areas it can happen. I sure wouldn't want to drink the water near Detroit where, where all that problem was going on. But what I'm saying is every place has its wonderful aspects. Every place has its downfall. And there's no exceptions to that. There is no heaven on earth. Heaven is in heaven. So. Why build up one by tearing down another just makes no sense to me, and I just don't want to be part of that exercise. In the process of doing that, they'll hold up that country that they want to kiss the butt of. Uh, in this case, I I'm talking about Ecuador. They'll hold that up to an unreasonable standard, to something that Ecuador can't stand up to. Admire it for the beauty and positive things that it has to offer, and it certainly has that, and it's a great place to live if, if that's what you want to do. I have no hate to shove Ecuador in the least, but I try to see it reasonably, and I'll be getting to videos here in Colombia. People think that I'm all gung-ho on Colombia. It's all so perfect, and now I'm hating on Ecuador. That is so far from the truth. My personal preference is to live here, but I admire, respect, and love the time that I had in Ecuador, and while I'm pointing out some positive things, as longtime viewers know, don't worry, I'll be getting to the things that are just not, you know, the best here that you need to be aware of. However, I'm not going to hate on Colombia, and I don't hate on Ecuador. I don't build it up to some unreasonable standard. 
And people that do that are really trying to justify their own decision because they have doubt. And they just don't want to face up to that. So they say all of these amazing things that aren't necessarily true. But worse than that, they attack others that don't go along with that. It's a delusion. And another thing that this group does, and again, I'm talking specifically in Cuenca, but you can apply this to enclaves around the world. So they condescend to the local people without even realizing it. When they separate them out about specific aspects of their culture and go on and on about it, they're actually condescending to them. I've been so-and-so so for X number of years, therefore I know more. I mean, it's, it's the fallback argument when they have no argument. When there's any kind of conversation going on, they're the expert and they want to shut you down from having any say uh, by how many years. I did a tongue-in-cheek video uh, in my form of humor uh, with a puppet about this woman on uh, Facebook who would come out with these things. She lived out in the country pretty much by herself, isolated, and she'd been out there for about 30 years. But she would chime in on Facebook all the time giving advice that was horrible advice about immigration, about the laws, and she didn't have a clue. She came 30 years ago. She hadn't been through those processes. And in Ecuador, they change all the time. I mean, what you did last year could be different than what you need to do this year. From one office to another, what happens in Quito could be different than in Zogis and different in Guayaquil. It depends on what office you go to. But she would always chime in, and her fallback argument when people would try to respectfully correct her, well, I've been here for 30 years, you know, and that's, that's the voice that I used in that video. Not to pick on her, even though she was particularly nasty for a while, I, I did ultimately get an apologize from her, and I, I appreciated that and thanked her. But... That's a stand that's taken by a lot of expats about, I've been here for two years, I've been here for five years, I've been here for seven years, therefore I know more than you. And they totally disregard what somebody's experience might be, what their education might be. Six years living in an isolated enclave versus two years of somebody getting out and living on any particular topic, I mean, I'll take the person that's actively involved in that topic versus somebody who's guessing from afar. But, you know, it's always this default, well, I've been here longer, therefore I'm right, so shut up. So the bottom line, do I hate gringos? Absolutely not. I don't even hate these people that I'm talking about, but I don't enjoy being around them. I don't want to be part of that. It, it really is a negative energy for me, so I avoid them never know who is going to be one of those nut jobs so it's just easier to kind of stay clear of that another thing is I'm usually busy living my life I don't need to get involved in those things I'm, I, as I mentioned I'm not a social person really so what am I doing in my life well I, I was asked what's my typical day like I, I will do that coming up but here in general terms I'm busy assimilating, I'm busy learning, I'm busy researching, doing these videos, or just living life. You know, deciding where I'm going to go have lunch today, and what am I going to do tomorrow, and I need a new pan, and which one would be the best to buy, and where should I go buy it, and then go make that trip. I mean, that, that's life, and that's the mundane things about life what I'm involved in. And that's not chasing after uh, in these enclaves where to me it's just kind of a waste of time. Now if I was a social person and I needed that kind of support group to reinforce me, and that would be great. And that's fine. If you if that's what you want in life and, and you deserve, then then go for that. But again, go back to number one here, I try to avoid people that might be in that unsavory category for me. 
So in another country, why am I trying to learn and why am I trying to assimilate? Well, I already know the United States and I, I love the United States. I think it's probably the best place on the planet. That's not blind patriotism or propaganda, but the more you travel, the more you appreciate what is there. It, it, you get out and travel to a whole bunch of different countries, first world or otherwise, and you, you begin to appreciate more and more what's available, even if it's something as simple as Amazon.com. I mean, it does make life easier. So I already know the United States, but I want to live a good life in Ecuador or now here in Colombia. And the only way to do that is to meet people here to find out what's the best way to do this, what's the best way to do that, what's the best service to use to actively put your life in a better situation. And I'm all about that. And so that takes time. And the last thing I will say on this topic is I actually meet fairly often with uh, video watchers. I can't tell you how many times I met for coffee or lunch in Cuenca with various people that were considering moving to Cuenca or, or somewhere else uh, here in Colombia. I've already met with some people. I've got several coming up that I'll be meeting with. Uh, so I have no problem with that. It's not gringos in general. I'm a gringo. I admire where they come from. I'm interested. I'm curious about their experience. One of the more fascinating ones I met with, he's probably watching this, it was a former FBI agent. And I met him and his wife in Cuenca. And um, we must have talked for hours. And I just found them fascinating people. And I'm really glad I met them. And, and there's many others, actually. Um, as a matter of fact, of all the people that I've met, there's probably just been one or two that it's like, well, they're not really my cup of tea. I like people in general. Uh, but those are the reasons why you get that impression and why I do tend to avoid groups of gringos in enclaves, you know, like what happens in Cuenca. But that isn't why I'm not living in Cuenca, because uh, all the time I lived there, because I didn't go to these places, I never really saw many gringos. So it really wasn't, you know, that big of a problem. You see them on social media, I get attacked, I get uh, messages and emails, you know, attacking me for things that I happen, you know, it's like, well, I know this is real. You know, when you talk about the fruits and vegetables, or if you talk about the the beef and you know they think they know something but they haven't spent two minutes to really find out uh, it's just annoying it's just a it's just a waste of time and I have I have no interest in that so did that clear it up and did it not clear it up are you offended by this uh, do you understand where I'm coming from do you like the hat as always if you would like subscribe uh, there has been a boost, boost in subscriptions. I thank you for that. Uh, from We've gone from over 70% watching unsubscribed to we're now in the 60-something percent. So we've dropped a number of percentage points. So that's a good thing. More people watching are actually subscribed. If you're watching this and you watch these on a regular basis, why not subscribe? And of course, as always, put your comments, questions below. I've gotten a wave of exceptionally nice comments lately. And um, recently I haven't had very many haters. And it's nice, it's refreshing. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if that's the way the world was? And I don't, that's not to say I don't get comments challenging me. I'm fine with that, but just to come out and hate me for the sake of hating, I mean, come on, do you really know me enough to do that? So, that's where we're at. I'll see if I can get this thing uploaded today and get on to the next. See you soon.